The AmazeFit BIPU Pro is a fitness tracker that does just that, a whole lot of tracking, but it does it in a form factor that is both unique and familiar at the same time, and it looks great on paper and on your wrist. But is the BIPU Pro really pro? Well, in this video, I'm hopefully gonna answer that question for you. But before we jump into the details on that, if you don't know who I am, my name is Jadeup, and I'm here to help you guys make a better tech buying decision. Now, if that sounds cool to you, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do, hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my latest reviews. And with that said, let's check it out. Now this is a compact watch with a high-end aesthetic that'll make a lot of people assume that it's an Apple watch, which will make them pretty sus. In fact, many probably won't even be able to tell this isn't a smartwatch, especially if you use the Alexa voice controls, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. Now the OS itself is smooth and responsive, something you'd expect to find on a more powerful Wear OS or iOS device. And the single button feels really great and is super functional. A single press is opens up the app list or returns to the home screen and a long press will enter a workout mode selection screen. With all that kind of said, this could easily depress a lot of these Apple Watch users because at the end of the day, this thing is pretty darn functional and at a whole lot less cost. And like I said, actually still kind of looks like one. Now the stock band that it comes with is a very basic, very comfortable, I should say, silicone band. And they made it really simple to change these out. So you can buy different brands, different models, different materials to match your style, which is really convenient. There are a ton of interchangeable display skins, making it even more customizable. And if you're up to it, there is 50 plus different styles to choose from, 40 of which have a matching always on display. So you can really customize this watch with the band and the skin to make it look exactly how you like or change it on the fly depending on your style. And if those customizations aren't enough, you can even upload your own pictures to set as the wallpaper, making it even more specifically custom to you. Now in the tracking department, this guy has a lot to offer. 24 hour heart rate monitoring, sleep monitoring, stress monitoring. It's got an O2 sensor as well. At this price point, I like seeing the O2 sensor keep kind of creeping into lower and lower cost products. So it's really nice to see that here. So at the end of the day, as far as tracking wise, you're good to go. On top of that, you've also got 60 plus fitness tracking modes. So this thing can track basketball, swimming, weightlifting, yoga, all sorts of stuff. So anything you're into, you should be able to find a mode for it, select it and get some extremely good data when you're tracking those activities. Now you will notice that I did mention swim tracking because this can do it. It'll actually track the strokes when you're swimming. However, I will mention it's only five ATM water resistant. So don't dive too deep. Now, another great feature is that it has Amazon Alexa built in. Now it's great to see a smartwatch kind of feature as far as like a personal assistant being integrated into a fitness style watch, right? Not a full smartwatch. So it's great to see it here. I will say the only issue is that for some reason it's integrated and they've added it to one of your screens on the watch. However, you can't disable that screen. So if you're comfortable scrolling through all your screens, there's always going to be this Amazon Alexa spot. Now for me in particular, I'm not a big Amazon Alexa fan. I use Google, you know, Google assistant and all that kind of stuff on the Android side. So I don't have an integration there, which is fine. I wasn't expecting any type of integration with their assistant. However, if I don't use Amazon Alexa, I would like to have it either disabled or removed from my screen. So I don't have to kind of deal with it. So it just kind of ended up taking up one of those app slots in your screen sliding and you could never get rid of it regardless of whether you were using the feature or not. Now in the battery department, this the, the advertise roughly nine days of battery life with normal use. I am as normal as you get for usage wise and I was able to get actually 10 full days of battery life before I needed to stick this guy back on the charger to bring it back to life. So it performed better than I had expected. Now, I will say if you use the sports tracking modes or you're constantly checking your heart rate or you're doing extra stuff, you're keeping the always on screen on, lots of stuff like that, you're gonna see that battery, inc you know, battery decrease fairly quickly. Using a tracking mode definitely will chew up the battery because it's activating all the sensors to really get a ton of data. So if you're a really active person, you're using that tracking mode, you're gonna probably need to charge it uh, maybe once a week or so, maybe a little bit more depending on how often you do it. But if you're just an average user who just wants to track sleep data, heart rate every once in a while, steps, you know, basic fitness stuff like I do, this is gonna work great and you should expect somewhere in between nine and 10 days of battery life. After sitting here doing this recording for a little bit, I started thinking about the different modes. Now, I would be curious to know if you guys end up getting a watch like this or you have another watch that does tracking of different sports modes like 
cricket or basketball or you know non-conventional events that that aren't I, I don't know if you track crazy sports can you guys let me know down in the comment section below i'm curious to see what kind of data you get from that and and what you use it for or how it's helpful to you i'm just i'm just curious how people use these tracking modes because 90 60 40 plus tracking modes i just i don't use those kinds of things and I don't use the really unique ones. So I'd be curious to hear what you guys think. So again, hit me up down in the comment section if you do any of those trackings of specific sports modes and let me know. So at the end of the day, at $69.99, this little watch does a pretty good job. And I, I do wanna mention this and I'll show it to you here. This is a little watch. This is kind of a petite style watch. I mean, if you look, it doesn't really fit great as far as like the width of my arm. It, it feels small in comparison to some of the watches. I like bigger watches in particular. So it is, I'll say this little watch and I mean because it's kind of a little watch. Um, it does a lot of stuff, okay? It, it's actually, I was very impressed with it. When I first pulled it out of the box, it looked like a lot of the other really more basic trackers that I have tested and reviewed and, and used. And surprisingly, it does really, really well on tracking data. There's a lot of features in here. It's got a lot of functionality. It feels very premium. In fact, it feels so premium. My wife is waiting for me to finish this review so she can snag it. Um, but it's it's a really cool little watch. So it's $69.99. I definitely think this is a great deal. But I want to mention really quickly before I wrap up this video, I want to talk to the people who have the BIP U, would not the BIP U Pro, but the BIP U. I want to specifically talk to you right now. The BIP U is the version that came out just before this, and it looks on paper, if you look at the, all the specs and everything, everything is nearly identical, okay? So this guy, the, the BIPU and BIPU Pro are almost synonymous. You almost cannot tell the difference. So for those of you who have the BIPU or somebody who's looking at getting the BIPU or the BIPU Pro, where you're trying to decide there's a $10 difference between them, the, the difference, the main difference, what makes it the Pro version is the fact that it has offline GPS tracking. So there is a GPS unit in this watch that's going to allow you to track your activities when you're out and about without your phone being nearby. The BIP U uses assisted GPS or a GPS, basically relying on the phone to track the GPS location data for the watch, which means you have to have the two of them close by for that to function. So I say that specifically for a few different reasons. One, if you're considering getting the BIP U or the BIP U Pro and you don't need that uh, offline tracking, that, that, that kind of standalone GPS tracking, you can save yourself 10 bucks and just get the BIP U. Now, if you do need that, if you want to be able to leave your phone at home and still get all that tracking data because you like to go on runs and not carry anything with you, then the BIP U Pro is the way to go and it's only 10 bucks different. So um, beyond that, there's really no difference. So it's a $10 difference. You guys be the judge on what you think is worth it. So guys, that is the BIP U Pro review. If you're looking at getting this already, Amazfit makes amazing products. So I definitely recommend pretty much anything out there that they sell. So definitely check into it. Again, as usual, links are down in the description below to the, uh, the BIP U and the BIP U Pro. I put them both down there just so you guys can go and check them out and, and learn what you need to. But guys, I'm curious to hear what you think. Do you think this is worth 69 bucks? Is this something that you would be interested in? Let me know if there's any questions, comments, concerns. Hit me up down in that comment section below. I try to reply to as many any comments as I possibly can. But as usual, guys, that is it for me, and I will see you in the next review.